Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to another case study. Today we're looking at this 2009 Mini Cooper. It's got the 1.6 liter four cylinder engine. The customer complaint is that the vehicle is running rough. We got called out to come take a look at it. You guys already know how we do it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and verify the complaint. I've got the key right here in my hand. I'm gonna jump inside the vehicle and start this thing up. <laughs> We'll let the idle come down. I can tell you right now, it's definitely running rough. I can feel the engine shaking, vibrating. Now we did have a check engine light a second ago up here, um, but it's also up here. You guys can see the check engine light on this little center display. It is illuminated, so we're gonna wanna go ahead and hook up the scan tool and see what that's all about. But one quick thing I wanted to do before we go any further is to do a quick visual check under the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing open, open this thing up. There we go. You guys can see we have this four cylinder 1.6 liter engine. And what we want to do is a quick visual check. Just make sure that we don't have anything obvious like a uh, air hose disconnected or something. Looks like nothing really looks like it's disconnected. Just kind of doing a quick visual check here, making sure there's nothing obvious. Everything seems to be attached. I don't know if you guys can hear the way the engine is running, but it definitely has a rough idle and it sounds like it's got a pretty nasty misfire. Now, the other thing that I did notice is if you guys look at the tailpipe over here, you can see that we have a lot of this black soot coming up and some light smoke coming out. I'm not really sure what that is, if that's oil or fuel or what that is coming out of the tailpipe. I mean, smelling it, it kind of smells like maybe burning oil. I mean, it really doesn't smell like fuel. So I don't know if I should suspect a uh, bad fuel injector. Again, this thing sounds like it's got a pretty bad misfire right now. So I guess that is a possibility. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and hook up the scan tool and see if we got any codes. All right, guys, so I've got my scan tool here. I'm using the uh, Launch X431 Pro Mini. And to be honest with you guys, I made a pretty stupid mistake. I came in here and I read the fault codes. And uh, what I found was that we had fault codes for misfires across all of the cylinders, cylinders one, two, three, and four. And uh, then, you know, I was kind of fiddling around with the camera and I pulled the scan tool back out because I wanted to film it. Um, but I actually went ahead and I cleared the fault codes accidentally. You guys can see when I hit clear fault code, I mean, it just cleared it right away. There was no, uh, you know, are you sure you want to clear the fault code? I just I accidentally hit clear fault code instead of hitting read fault code. So I cleared the DTCs. So I apologize, I'm not able to show them to you, but just trust me, I saw them. They were misfires all across the board. And like I said, um, you know, I cleared it so the check engine light is gone now, but it's still running really bad. It's running like crap. And honestly, after I cleared it, um, I could hear it run even worse. So I don't know if that ended up clearing like the fuel trim values or something because after I hit that clear fault code, the engine just sounded worse. So uh, I guess the next thing I wanted to do was going to the data stream here and I wanted to take a look at the misfire detection here. Now, right now at the moment, we don't have any misfires because the engine kind of seems to have smoothed out a little bit. Let me raise the RPM just a little, oh, kind of hiccup there for a second. Seems to run a little bit better at the higher RPM range. As you guys can see, we don't have any major misfires happening right now. We're back down to idle. So I guess the next thing I want to do is maybe go into the live data and take a look at the fuel trim values and see if maybe that tells us anything. Okay guys, so real quick, one issue that I'm running into, um, and this may just be because I'm not too familiar with these vehicles or the way the information is displayed in the scan tool uh, for these Mini Coopers or BMWs or whatever. But I mean, I looked through this whole list here of the uh, data PIDs under the OEM software and I can't seem to find one that tells us what our fuel trim values are. Now again, it's probably just because I'm not familiar with it. I mean, if you guys know what they call the fuel trim values uh, for these Mini Coopers, let me know down in the comment section because I may just not be familiar with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to back out all the way and I'm going to go into uh, global OBD2 mode. So I'm just going to uh, pull up a generic scan tool and use that to find the fuel trim values. So we'll go into OBD here and then hit submit. We'll go into live data. Let me scroll down here. You guys can see right here, we have our long-term fuel trim. Let's find our short-term, short-term right here. Um, we also have our fuel system status. And I guess we can go ahead and throw in the 
airflow meter while we're in there. So here we have our data pids. Like I said, if you guys are not familiar with the OEM software, in this case, I really wasn't. You know, it's good to know that you can always go back to the global mode and get the information you need there. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at are the fuel trims. And immediately you can see that the short term is up at 25. And if you look at the long term, it's pretty close to zero, but that may be because I accidentally cleared the codes. And so it's going to be updating as this goes on. But if you take a look up here at the fuel system status, you can see that we're in closed loop fault. So the computer does recognize that we do have a problem at the moment. Now this fuel trim value being up at 25 does indicate that we do have a lean condition. In fact, we have a very lean condition because if I'm not mistaken, I think 25 is the limit. So if you guys look over here, it's negative 25 to positive 25 is what our limit is on this fuel trim value. So the computer really is maxing out the fuel output in order to keep up with the lean mixture that we have here. Now, our next task is to try to figure out what type of lean condition do we have? Do we have a lean condition in which we're having too much air or do we have a lean condition in which we don't have enough fuel supply? What I mean by that is, do we have some type of vacuum leak in which unmetered air is entering the engine or do we have some type of fuel problem in which we don't have enough fuel or fuel supply in order to keep up the proper air fuel ratio mixture. Now, one of the quickest and easiest ways to determine that is to simply raise the RPM and hold it somewhere around 3000. And what we're gonna do is we're going to watch the fuel trim values and we're gonna see if they get better or if they get worse. Do the numbers come down and get closer to zero, the higher the RPM range, or do those numbers get higher and get worse? That's going to tell us whether or not we have a vacuum leak. Now, the theory behind this is that the intake manifold on the engine really is only under vacuum during idle when the throttle body is closed once you open up the throttle body you're introducing the atmospheric pressure into the intake manifold therefore rendering the vacuum irrelevant so what i mean by that is that a vacuum leak really only matters during idle and on the other hand if we have a fuel supply problem raising the rpm is going to increase the demand of fuel so the computer is going to try to output more fuel but if the fuel pump cannot keep up with the fuel demand from the computer the engine is going to run lean hopefully that makes sense to you guys so the first thing i want to do is go ahead and raise the rpm and i'm going to hold it somewhere around 3000 you guys can see it kind of had a hesitation there get it up to 3000 i'm holding it there steady let's take a look at the fuel trim values now the important thing is that the RPM has to stay steady. You don't wanna pay attention to these numbers unless your RPM reading is steady. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see that our short-term value is pretty much hovering right around zero, and so is our long-term. So right now, we're pretty much zeroed out. This right here is exactly what we wanna see. This is telling us that the numbers are getting better the higher the RPM. So what that indicates is that more than likely what we're dealing with is some type of vacuum leak. Now that we're back down to idle, you guys can see our fuel trim values went right back up. Take a look at that. We're back up at 25 on the short term fuel trim here. So we're definitely still running lean. So the next thing I want to do is go back under the hood and try to see if we can find any obvious signs of a vacuum leak. You know, we could try to listen for a hissing noise. That may be a good indication of a vacuum leak. But at the moment, I really don't hear any hissing noise. Again, we want to check to make sure that this intake tube it is properly attached. It is not loose or falling off. You guys can see it's attached at the throttle body down there. Well, hopefully you can see our tube is attached. The air box is nice and stiff. None of this tubing is loose. Everything seems to be connected. And really we don't have too many external vacuum lines on this engine. Now, I do believe we have a vacuum pump right here and you can see it has been leaking some oil. Now, I don't know if that really makes much of a difference because I don't believe that this vacuum pump really affects the air fuel metering on this engine. I think it's just there to supply extra vacuum to run other accessories on the vehicle. Now, the other thing along with the visual check that we could do is probably run the smoke machine on this engine. But unfortunately, I did not bring my smoke machine with me, so I don't have the ability to do that right now. So really what I wanna do is a very thorough visual check um, the first thing I want to try to do is remove this box right here because it's covering the intake manifold. The intake manifold is kind of buried underneath this box and this intake tubing here. So I'm going to have to remove that, pull it out of the way so I can get a good look at the intake manifold so I can pretty much figure out where all the hoses are routed to and see if we have any of them that are disconnected, ripped, or broken. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to set the camera down, do a little bit more digging, and hopefully we can figure something out here. Okay, guys, so fast forward. Let me show you what I found. 
again so i removed the ducting that was here i went ahead and i detached this air box so i can get a good look at the intake manifold that's down here you guys can see this is the intake manifold here um, but when i looked back there you know i really didn't see too many vacuum lines on this engine there is one main vacuum line that comes off the side over here and i believe there was another hose but everything was attached i didn't see anything obvious so i was kind of left scratching my head there but let me tell you guys what i stumbled across and it was really by chance because i went to remove this cover here that goes over the ignition coils now this cover in order to get it off i had to remove this oil cap but let me show you what i noticed when i removed the oil cap so if you pay attention i'm going to kind of loosen the oil cap a little bit and I want you to listen for a hissing noise. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera. We got a hissing noise there. Now the other thing, if you pay attention, is that look what happens when I let go of the oil cap. You guys can see this engine is sucking this oil cap right back down onto the valve cover. So. When I go ahead and I remove the oil cap altogether, you can hear that the engine starts running even rougher. So let me get this oil cap off of here. Well, I don't even know. This thing feels like it doesn't even really tighten like it's supposed to. Let me get this thing off of here. There we go. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the engine is running really rough. You guys hear that? Sounds like it's getting ready to stall. It's just sputtering really bad. Now the other thing I noticed is that if I put my hand over this hole here, it kind of sucks my hand in, just like it's sucking in this oil cap. Again, I'm gonna put the oil cap on there. So we definitely have some type of internal vacuum leak from this engine. Now typically on a four cylinder engine like this, if you have a crankcase vacuum, it usually has to deal with a bad PCV valve. Now the thing is that I don't see any obvious signs of a PCV valve on this engine. I don't know where it's located, but I'm gonna bet money that that PCV valve is probably built into the valve cover like it is on a lot of other four cylinder engines. I mean, it does kind of look like there may be a diaphragm or something underneath this kind of capped area over here. If you pay attention, hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. There's like this cap right here, this little cover. I mean, I guess we could try to pop it off. Now, the other thing that I noticed too is that um, she said she recently had the valve cover gasket replaced and she showed me the receipt. And sure enough, she has a receipt from a shop where six months ago they replaced the valve cover gasket. Um, so, you know, if they replace the valve cover gasket, we shouldn't have any signs of an oil leak. But if you guys pay attention right over here, you can see that we definitely have oil leaking now what i noticed is that if you follow it up you can see where the stain is actually coming from and if you look down into this hole you see this hole is filled with oil yeah now compare that to this hole over here it's nice and dry again looking back over at this one you can see that it's full of oil now that's either coming from this oil cap not sealing properly because honestly it does feel like this oil cap doesn't really fit on there like it's supposed to you guys can see i can just keep turning this thing and it never really tightens it's almost like it gets tight it gets tight like right about there but then when it's right there you can hear a vacuum leak and then when you go a little bit further it just loosens back up and you guys can see again this thing just sucks the cap right on there so i don't know if it's an issue with the oil cap leaking or maybe the diaphragm that's in this pcv valve that's in here is leaking you guys can see looks like we have maybe some oil coming from here and it's kind of coming down the side of the valve cover and going into this hole right here in the cover. I don't know, I'm not really sure, but uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of research, try to figure out where in fact the PCV valve is located and I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, so after doing a quick Google search, I was able to determine that this in fact here is the PCV valve. And uh, what I wanna show you guys real quick is this here is the vacuum line that comes directly from the intake manifold. And what I did is right now it's kind of halfway disconnected because I want to show you something real quick. If you look at the scan tool, again, our fuel trim value, you can see we're at 25, totally positive. What I want to do next is I want to go ahead and disconnect this uh, line here and I'm going to plug it up with my thumb and that's going to eliminate the leak that we have inside of this PCV valve. Just like that. So I got my thumb over it. You guys can hear the engine is running a little bit better. Now pay attention to the fuel trim values. 
check that out. We're going way negative now. You see that? We were at positive 25. Now we're down at negative 25. Looks like it's counteracting like it's supposed to. And you can see those numbers are trying to correct themselves. So it definitely looks like we have an issue with this PCV valve here. Now, I really wish I hadn't cleared these values because I'm pretty sure what you would have seen is that uh, the long term was at positive 25. And now with my finger over this vacuum line, the uh, short term would have been negative 25 showing a counteraction in the fuel trim. But unfortunately, like I said, I accidentally cleared the codes on this thing, which I'm pretty sure cleared the fuel trim memory. So anyways, that's where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace this valve cover because um, I called around local auto parts and I could not find anybody that supplied just this PCV valve. Everyone wants to sell you the whole cover. So that's what we're going to do. Luckily, there's an auto parts right down the road that has one in stock. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. We'll be back. Let's go ahead and replace this thing. Okay, guys, so we're back. As you guys can see, we have the valve cover removed. I've got the old one here on the ground and over here in the box, you can see we have the new valve cover. Now this is a Euro parts uh, brand replacement. Uh, supposedly it's the OEM equivalent. It just doesn't have the BMW badging on it or whatever, uh, but this is an OEM quality part. Now I do wanna apologize for not showing you guys uh, the process of removing the valve cover and putting on the new one. That's not the point of this video. This is not a video on how to replace your valve cover. We're simply going over the diagnostic part of it. So I'm gonna get back to work. I'm gonna go ahead and install this new valve cover and we'll see how everything runs. Okay guys, so now that we have everything pretty much back together, it is the moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and step inside the vehicle. And we are going to try to start this thing up. Here we go, got the key in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it into the slot. And already guys, I can tell you it sounds a whole lot better. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scan tool. Okay guys, so taking a look at the fuel trims, check out that short term. Look at that, we're hovering right around zero, kind of going positive, negative. You can see we're kind of going up positive five, negative five, but staying right around zero, which is really where we want to be right now. Like I said, the fuel trims are trying to adjust. Uh, so what I do want to try to do is go ahead and reset the memory one more time, just to make sure that everything is going to read properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so moving back over to using the OEM software, we're going to go ahead and select special function and I believe general, and we'll find the clear adaptations here. You can see the way it's set up here. Number one is gonna be a description of the adaptations. Number two is gonna be the clearing. Number three is gonna be delete adaptation variable camshaft timing control. So we'll go ahead and start with that. You can read the description. It'll tell you that the adaptation makes it possible that the engine control unit can learn certain values of components and thus compensate for certain component tolerances. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Got some more information here about the fuel mixture adaptation. I mean, you guys can read through this, but uh, I'm not really too concerned about that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's got some more information here about tank venting. Okay, and there's a lot of information there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit two. That's going to clear our adaptations and we are set to go. You guys can see the adaptation values have been successfully reset. So we're gonna go ahead and move back to the fuel trims. Okay, so once again, taking a look at the fuel trims for one last time, you can see we're pretty much exactly where we wanna be, right around zero on the short-term and the long-term fuel trim. It definitely looks like we fixed the problem. I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing for a quick test drive and deliver it back to the customer. By the way, guys, there is one more thing that I wanted to address while we we're still here. If you guys recall, we had this tailpipe uh, spitting out a bunch of this soot material and we really weren't sure what it was, but uh, I do feel now that we have reason to believe that this is probably oil residue from the PCV valve uh, being ruptured or stuck open or whatever the case may be. I'm pretty sure that there was oil getting sucked into the engine, getting burned, and now it's coming out of the tailpipe. So it does look to me like there's no longer any smoke coming out of it, and it doesn't stink the way it did before. Anyways, guys, that concludes the video. Like I always say, I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informational. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.